Well, 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 looks like it's that time again. Double XP Live is coming up on February 19th and it's going to last until March 1st. For those of you who don't know how it works, you'll have 48 hours in the game where your actions will give you double the amount of XP you would typically get from members. If you're free to play, you'll get 20% more experience. It may not be as much as members, but it's better than nothing. This timer can be paused so you can use your time efficiently, but after pausing and then resuming, you won't be able to pause it again until an hour has passed, so use that feature wisely. Unfortunately, not everything in the game will grant you double XP. Here's a list of activities that will not give you that bonus. Actions like offering bones at player-owned altars, completing quests, and doing minigames will not benefit from this event. Because of that, it's not a good idea to focus on these activities unless your timer is paused. Every skill in the game is affected by this event, but two skills work a bit differently than the others. Archaeology, which is a relatively new skill, will not gain double XP when restoring artifacts, so there's no point in saving the artifacts for this. Instead, your base precision when excavating will be doubled, which means you'll get artifacts at double the rate. The XP you get from screening sand and uncovering artifacts will be doubled as well, so it's worth doing archaeology during double XP if you need more levels. Invention is another skill that works differently from the others. Instead of getting double XP when siphoning items, your augmented items will gain 50% more XP than usual, so they'll level up quickly so you can siphon them at a faster rate. Making items on the workbench will also grant 50% more XP, as well as disassembling items. However, you will not get extra XP when disassembling equipment, so keep that in mind. Aside from those two skills and the restrictions we mentioned earlier, Doing any action that grants XP will be doubled, from fighting bosses to shoveling manure. So now that we know how double XP works, what are the best skills to focus on? There are some skills to the game that are referred to as buyable skills, meaning you can simply buy all the materials that you need to level up. This can get pretty expensive fast though, so focusing on these skills during double experience will cut the amount of money that you need in half. On screen are some of the buyable skills that are good to train. If you want to focus on getting your account ready for combat to do PvM, the three skills that you're going to want to focus on the most are going to be Herbalore, Summoning, and Prayer. For Herbalore, buying the ingredients for potion making can get pretty pricey, and this is an extremely useful skill to level up because of extreme potions and overloads. Once you reach level 96, you can start crafting basic overloads. These potions are great because they boost your combat stats, and they're needed to make even better overload potions like Elder Overloads at level 106. Since you can't buy these in the GE, you'll need to level up to make them yourself, so it's a good idea to try and reach these levels so you can improve your combat and take on higher level bosses. Summoning is also a good skill that you'll want to level because of the Beast of Burdens and combat familiars that you can use. Lower level Beast of Burdens don't give you too much extra space, so you'll want to work your way up to unlock War Tortoises and Pachyaks. Pachyaks are good not only because they can carry more inventory than you can carry, but you can also use their Winter Storage ability to send items directly to the bank from your inventory, wherever you are in RuneScape. They are also significantly cheaper than War Tortoises. You'll need to be level 96 to use them though, so training summoning during double XP is good to reach that goal sooner. At this level, you can also summon Ripper Demon, which is a very strong combat familiar. The best way to train summoning is to start by using all of your gold charms and then work your way up to blue. You want to save your blue charms for last because you'll ideally get other levels as you use the other charms. This way, you can use your blue charms on the highest level creature you can make for more XP. If you want to find out how you can farm summoning charms, you can take a look at our summoning guide. You also want to save your spirit gems from when you're using crimson or blue charms since those give the better XP rates than gold or green. Prayer is good to focus on because you'll want to unlock curses for higher level combat. Soul Split can be a life saving curse, but you'll need level 92 player to unlock it along with the completion of Temple of Seniston quest. Even though offering bones at a gilded altar or chaos altar don't grant double experience, you still get double experience from cleansing crystals and prif. You can buy crystals from Heffin monks to offer to the Siren Stone. If you do this method, make sure you wait for the Heffin hour to get that 20% more experience on top of the double experience you're getting from the event. Divination is one of the skills needed to unlock invention, which is something you want to work towards getting ASAP, so this is a good option as well. During double XP, you can go to the Hall of Memories if you're level 70 and join the Core Hunting Friends chat to find which world is having a party. This means the core memories in the middle will pop faster, so you can harvest almost non-stop. It's also extremely AFK, but you can 2-tick it if you want higher XP rate. 
If you're somebody that wants to eventually reach max, you'll want to focus on skills that can take a lot of time and effort to level. Agility is definitely one of those skills, but a great method to train it during this time is to use Silverhawk boots. You can get the boots for free in the Ottoman store, but you'll need to buy Silverhawk down with Ottomans to charge it. If you don't have Ottomans, you could also buy Silverhawk feathers in the GE. When wearing these, you'll have a chance to get agility experience whenever you get any XP drop or even just walk around. It's definitely worth spending Ottomans on these feathers since you can passively train agility that way. So what's the best way to prepare for double XP? First decide on what skills you want to train the most. Pick three or four main skills you want to focus on and decide what goals you want to reach for each one. Decide on a few backup skills you want to train too. That way, if you complete your goals sooner than you expected, you'll at least have something else to do. Then start gathering the materials you'll need. You'll want to buy or make skilling urns for whatever skills it applies to, along with perfect juju potions and familiars that give skilling boosts like lava titans for mining or granite lobsters for fishing. These items won't get any additional boosts from the event, but they're still good to use when skilling. To find out how much of a certain item you need when training, you can use the skilling calculator found in Rune HQ. The link is in the description. Here, you can select which skill you want to train, what your goal is, and what kind of XP boosts you have active. Be sure to check off the double XP box as well. Then, just look for what item you're using, and then you can see how much you need, along with the profit or the loss you'll have. If you have any skilling outfit pieces, be sure to always wear those, but prioritize your Silverhawk boots if you plan on training agility. If you're training buyables, make sure to buy everything ahead of time. A lot of people will be buying materials during the week, so it may be hard to get what you need at a decent price once the event is live. If you're buying a lot of specific items, remember that each item has a buying limit for every 4 hours, so give yourself enough time to buy all the items that you need. You'll need a lot of spirit shards for summoning, so this is definitely something you'll want to prepare for ahead of time. Don't forget to gather the charms you'll need ahead of time. Ores that give you additional XP, like Wisdom, stack for this event, so get that going if you have it. If you have Premier Club, always make sure to use that 10% XP buff as well. It's also a good idea to save presets for each of the skills you're training to make everything more efficient. If you're training artisan skills like Herbalore or Fletching, you'll want to use portables. Portables will allow for more efficient training since you can make what you need near the bank. You'll also get XP boost for using them and other benefits. World 84 in Lumbridge always has portables down, but it can get pretty laggy there. As an alternative, you can join the portables friends chat and ask them for portables so that way you can find one outside of World 84. You can boost your level with potions in order to create things that are a higher level than you currently are so it's good to drink those to make items that give you even more experience. Aside from the great XP gains, there's some other things you can make use of from this event. Since a lot of people will be training Herblore, this is a good time to buy potions. People tend to sell them for a cheaper price during this time just so that they can get rid of them fast to get money for other things quickly. The same goes for cooked food. And if you have an alchemizer, this is also a good time to buy bows for a cheaper price to throw in the machine. If you're interested in making some money, you can work on getting supplies that other people would want to buy while your timer is paused. Some people want to get their supplies quickly, so a lot are willing to increase their offer to do that. Getting supplies like gems, planks, or archaeology materials can be good for that. Other than that, be sure to take breaks. Now that the event is longer than the original two days, you can afford to take breaks without missing out on that double XP gains. Try not to burn yourself out too much. Jagex has made double XP much easier to partake in without promoting an unhealthy amount of playing, so take advantage of that and try to enjoy the game. So happy scaling and good luck to meeting all your goals. Leave a like if you found this video helpful and thanks for watching. Bye! Bye.